So for those of you complaining that Google has dropped the ball with the Pixel, wait till you hear this. Because yes, it looks like Google wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Apple by putting their own chip on the next Pixels. Some new leaks show us that the iPhone SE will finally be getting a redesign, but there's a catch. And some new leaks show us the specifications of the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III, because it seems that that's coming very soon. I'm Jaime Rivera, and uh, don't blame me for not doing a daily yesterday. We needed to make sure that the news were real. And second, please get vaccinated as soon as you can. I got mine today because I'm that old, but we just helped that light at the end of the tunnel get closer. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with deals, and don't worry, we verify that all of these are real. Let's start with Samsung and B&H, because uh, that keeps getting aggressive. See, they currently have the Galaxy S21 Plus for $150 off, leaving that at $700 with free shipping included. But moving on to Samsung.com, I know that in certain parts it still doesn't feel like spring, but uh, the spring deals continue. You can grab the Galaxy S21 for $200, the S21 Plus for $400, or the Ultra for $600. You can also get the Z Fold 2 for $1,200, or the Note 20 Ultra for $900, but of course you need an eligible device for trade-in. But by the way, though, that's Z Fold 2 has now a permanent price drop of $200 off if you don't have that trade-in. And there's also a new referral program for current owners of uh, foldables off from Samsung to get an additional discount for a friend that's wanting one. Now, moving on to Amazon, the M1 MacBook Air is still $50 off, leaving the entry-level variant for $949. Finally, the OnePlus 8 Pro is still $300 off its original price tag, leaving it at $699. And we have more deals on OnePlus devices, SSDs, cases, and others in the description. Now let's talk about LG as I hate to say this, but this might be the beginning of the end. Over the past couple of months, there's been multiple reports claiming that LG would be exiting the smartphone market, but it looks like it's actually going to happen. According to a new report from the Korea Times, LG has reportedly entered a transition phase where they are relocating their employees from the smartphone division to other business units. As a matter of fact, the publication came in contact with a company official, and he mentioned that they will be making an announcement regarding the direction of their mobile communications business soon. If you're wondering how soon, the report cites industry sources that claim that they will be making the official announcement at their board meeting on Monday, April 5th. Now, we won't speculate here as we're so close, but it's really sad to see LG go after all the innovation. I mean, guys, the LG G4 still has taken some of the best photos that I've ever taken from a phone. And it's truly just sad to see this happen, but it is what it is. Now let's move the spotlight on to Sony as uh, we have some new leaks for their upcoming flagship. A little over a month ago, we got some leaks from the new design from OnLeaks, but we didn't have much other information to go from. Now we have some leak specifications from Weibo that, uh, well, reveal everything else. The Xperia 1 Mark III will reportedly pack a HDR 4K OLED display running at 120 hertz in Sony typical 21 by 9 aspect ratio. It'll be powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 along with either 12 or 16 gigs of RAM and up to half a terabyte of storage. It'll bring a 5,000 milliamp hour battery with support for 65 watt fast charging, but they don't mention any details on wireless charging. Now when it comes to cameras, we will reportedly get a 64 megapixel main sensor along with a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel telephoto, which relies on a periscopic lens that delivers up to 60x zoom, though that might be digital. Now Sony already made their event official for April 14th, so stay tuned as this might actually be the first time that we get an Xperia 1 smartphone that's actually on par with everything else that's already in the market, and that's great. Now, since we know that that Sony phone won't be affordable, let's talk about a more affordable product with the next generation iPhone SE. There's been multiple reports talking about how we will be getting a refresh this year or next year, but it won't bring a new design. Well, we just got a new tweet from Ross Young where he gives us leaks on multiple future models. Now, speaking of the one for next year, he claims that it'll bring a 4.7 inch LCD display with some rumors claiming that it might bring both flavors of 5G. Where it gets interesting is when he mentions that he is hearing about a 6.1 inch variant coming in 20 
2023 with a punch hole instead of a notch. If you haven't been paying attention, reports from very trusted sources claim that Cupertino will finally move on to punch holes either next year or 2023, so it makes sense. Of course, we're still very far away, but let's see what happens as we should be getting a rumored SE Plus soon, right? Or, I mean, we hope so. But finally, for the hottest news today, let's talk about Google and Pixels. But no, it's not about a hands-on leak or anything like that yet. Give it a couple of days. If you remember, there was a report that came out in April of last year that claimed that Google was designing their own chip called Whitechapel to go in Pixels and Chromebooks. Pretty much what Apple has been doing with iPhone since version 4, iPad since Gen 1, and the Mac right now with the M1. Well, a new report from 9to5Google claims that the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 5a, which are codenamed Raven and Oreo respectively, will be among the first phones that will be equipped with this chip based on this Whitechapel platform. Also, notice birds for the code names, not fish this time. Now, to quote the report, Whitechapel is an effort from Google to create their own SoC, similar to how Apple did with the Mac, iPads, and iPhones. They're apparently co-developing Whitechapel with Samsung, which already rivals Snapdragon when it comes to Android phones. Finally. Now, speaking of Qualcomm, I mean, I wonder what's going Going to happen with them as uh, we know they've had a really good partnership with Google. I mean, the first ever Snapdragon debuted it on the first ever Google Nexus One. The chip is apparently called GS101 internally, with GS probably standing for Google Silicon. So if you guys think about it, it looks like Google wants to go toe to toe with Apple considering they make Android, they make the Pixels, they make Chromebooks, they own the Play Store, and now they'll be making their own chip. If they do pull an Apple, this could actually mean that Chromebooks will be getting better at running Android apps and pretty much everything. But in today's question, I'm really curious. What do you think about a Google Pixel that's not running a Snapdragon chip? Would you be enticed or not? Because in my case, well, if I remember correctly, this is actually not the first time that we get a Google phone without a Snapdragon chip. I believe that the Nexus S also had a Nexus Exynos many years ago. Uh, I, I still have to confirm that. And then we had like a TIO map on the Galaxy Nexus, if I'm not mistaken. So it's not the first time. Uh, and then we did get a mid-ranger chip with the, you know, Pixel 5. So, I mean, We'll see what happens. That's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on PocketNow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. And follow me on my personal handles to see me uh, skip April Fools for a reason. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.